DNA evidence from an almost 20 year old rape case was found here in the office of a former employee. This season, the Ashes have been selling out Minute Maid Park. And it's the people who've been sitting in these seats that have made an impact on the guy's performance each and every night out here. Amanda Downs was driving down Highway 225, aiming a gun at innocent drivers trying to get through traffic faster. James Harden and Chris Paul easily make one of the best duos in the league a duo strong enough to beat Golden State. And conditions from Tropical Storm Cindy are starting to worsen. You can see the choppy surf, the debris on the ground, and the heavy rain. And while there is a voluntary evacuation in place, residents say they're gonna stay put. Rockets fans were surprised to hear today that longtime owner Leslie Alexander is selling the franchise after 24 years. But don't go selling your merchandise just yet. This happened in Bell Park in Montrose. Good afternoon, I'm Casey Bowen. Police aren't sure why this particular statue was targeted. 16 rows down and just a few steps over. This is where one horn frog sits during every home game at Amma G. Carter Stadium. And during Saturday's game against Kansas, one thing made him go viral. But it wasn't something on the field, it was something in the stands. Trevor Deary has been playing percussion since he was in the sixth grade. He took that passion and joined the Horn Frog Marching Band. This is my third year in the marching band, so three years. And this year he's taken that passion an eight count further. I love TCU football so much and just like the energy that the games bring me just kind of translates his dance moves, I guess. Those dance moves made him viral. I'm not really used to getting all this attention. I just kind of do what I usually do at games that just so happen to be on video, so. But it was, and now people are taking a notice to Deary and his love for the frogs. <laughs> but Deary is more than just the TCU show guy. Laid back, kind of guy, I'm easy to talk to, I'm always willing to help someone that's in need. Add in his own favorite dance move. The dab, I love dabbing. Like, and a whole lot of passion for the band. It has allowed me to prove as a player and also as an educator because I want to eventually teach band in my career and so it's definitely helped with that. And Deary said his time at TCU, playing for the band and every opportunity he's encountered has been indescribable. It's definitely been a journey for sure. Um, I've grown a lot as a person and I've like learned more about myself and learned more about the world and just express myself in a way that I thought was impossible. And with a few games still left in the season, Deary said, don't be surprised if you see some videos surface with some moves you haven't seen yet. Here in Amagee Carter Stadium, Casey Bowen, TCU News Now. We got here about one this afternoon and conditions from Tropical Storm Cindy are starting to worsen. You can see the choppy surf, the debris on the ground and the heavy rain. And while there is a voluntary evacuation in place, residents say they're gonna stay put crashing waves, rough winds, and choppy surf. That's just some of what Tropical Storm Cindy blew onto Bolivar Wednesday afternoon. It looks scary. It's so dark and windy. But many Bolivar residents are choosing to stay put, even with a voluntary evacuation in place. I'd evacuate if, if a big storm was coming. Even though Seth Sewell says this is some of the worst flooding he's seen. Almost the worst I've seen it in the uh, two and a half years I've been down here. Over on High Island, water has made its way onto Highway 87. TxDOT is warning drivers to be careful. It's a lot of water. It looks like it's already starting to flood. Tourists who came to Bolivar said now they'll have to look to spend their time elsewhere. Probably Galveston or Houston for a few days. The Galveston Ferry is continuing to run until conditions are no longer safe. On Bolivar, Casey Bowen, KHOU 11 News. Tuesday marked the worst terrorist attack in New York since 9-11. At TCU, one student was thinking of her brother, while TCU police were thinking of preventative measures. Eight people are dead in what New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio is calling a cowardly act of terror. This was an act of terror and a particularly cowardly act of terror aimed at innocent civilians, aimed at people going about their lives who had no idea of what was about to hit them. This is what police know happened so far. Around 3 p.m. on Tuesday, a driver in a rented truck drove onto a bike path along the West Side Highway a few blocks away from the One World Trade Center. 
He drove for about 10 blocks, hitting bicyclists and pedestrians before colliding with a school bus. After the collision, sources says the truck driver exited the vehicle with a pellet and a paintball gun. Police fired at the driver, hitting him in the stomach. I want to say that today there was a loss of innocent life in Lower Manhattan. While Lower Manhattan is more than 1,500 miles away from TCU, for some students, that doesn't lessen the impact. Very nervous for a good 10, 15 minutes. When he texted me, it was like relief completely. Senior Emma McElucky's brother works in Manhattan, and she said when she saw the news on social media, she panicked. I mean, everything you'd expect. I was nervous. Maybe he was there. Maybe something happened to him. Maybe he was helping others. I wasn't really sure. Just, you know, your mind goes to panic. McLucky said with the amount of attacks happening nowadays, people are finding themselves in the same situation. I think that everyone has a connection to someone somehow. Maybe it's no one close. Maybe it's your brother, your best friend. But anywhere an attack can happen, you know, the world's so small these days that you probably know someone, so it makes it that much closer to home. TCU PD says the attacks in New York shed light on safety measures they've been planning since the spring. Uh, in the spring semester, we started looking at security measures uh, for special events and the campus in general uh, in response to some suggestions from the Department of Homeland Security. These suggestions included preventative measures such as portable barriers when there are high periods of pedestrian traffic. A lot of bollards around campus, if you'll notice, that uh, were, are designed for that purpose to, to minimize vehic vehicular traffic where we have a large number of pedestrians walking. While TCUPD is taking preventative measures to ensure the safety of students, Officer Rangel said it's important for students to remember to enjoy life and not live in fear of something like the attack in New York happening here. Statistically, the possibility of something like happening on campus is relatively low. So we don't want people walking around uh, in emotional distress because they think they're going to be a victim that day of someone doing that. The police and FBI are continuing to question the suspect. While he claimed to be a part of ISIS, ISIS has not claimed responsibility for the attack.